Hello and welcome back to our Art Asset Pipeline tutorial series. Today, we're going to talk about creating physical collision proxies for your assets using the latest version of Blender, as well as getting them into CryEngine using the FBX pipeline. If you have watched any of the previous tutorials in the series, you might know that we have previously divided them into two sections. One of them was demonstrating the process of creating and importing the collision proxies using the CryTools pipeline, and the other using the FBX pipeline. The CryTools plugin set was developed internally by Crytek in order to simplify the work artists would need to put into every asset they create, supporting various versions of 3ds Max and Maya for 3D art purposes, as well as Photoshop, which is used when working with textures. There is no officially supported CryTools plugin for Blender, but that's not an issue. We have a solid implementation for FBX format support, meaning that the engine will be able to natively read and recognize FBX setups quite easily, allowing us to achieve the results we want without using any Crytek plugins. Today's tutorial will guide you through the entire proxy setup process, but before we get into the main topic of the video, I will take a second to explain what a proxy actually is. You see, when you're playing a game and you see your player colliding with anything in the world, be it an asset, or the ground, or even another player, what you're actually colliding with in most cases isn't the actual geometry of the object you're touching. Checking for collisions is really expensive, so we needed to find a way to simplify this process without taking the entire geometry of an asset into account for every single collision check. This is where proxies come in. Collision proxies are simple geometrical elements, or shapes, which are a much more simplified version of the original asset that they are linked to. In most use cases, they only need to slightly resemble the general outline of the original asset in order to behave realistically from a physical perspective. The level of detail represented in the proxy must match the specific use case of the asset. For example, let's say that this barrel I'm going to be using today is supposed to only roll around or block the player's path. In that case, a simple cylinder encasing the barrel will suffice as a physics proxy. However, if the barrel was open and the player should have the ability to place other physicalized assets inside of it, then the physics proxy should be detailed enough in order to allow you to do that. So let's jump right into the proxy creation process, and let's begin by modeling the general outline around the barrel. In order to be able to keep this tutorial somewhat short, I'll skip the modeling process, so if you don't know how to model simple geometry inside Blender, you should consult a basic Blender modeling tutorial. All we're doing in this step is modeling a simple cylinder that resembles a very low version of our barrel. And this will do. Now the first thing to keep in mind when creating physics proxies in Blender is that they will always have to be linked to the original mesh. So to do that, all I need to do is to select the proxy item in the hierarchy, and then I'll hold shift and I'll drag it right over my main mesh. Now, in order to signal the engine that this element is supposed to act as a physics proxy, I will rename the proxy geometry to $proxy. You can have multiple proxies parented to the same mesh, if your mesh has moving parts for example, but in those cases you'll have to also number the proxies by adding an underscore followed by the proxy number. So in that case I would start with a $proxy underscore 01 node, followed by a proxy 02 node, and so on. But that's not our case currently. Since I will only have one proxy for this object, I can simply just call it $proxy and we can move on to the next step. This is actually the last important step we have to take into account when it comes to the setup we have to do in Blender. We're talking about the material setup. In this current state, the proxy geometry would still act like any other render mesh. It would render, and we don't want that. We want the proxy geometry to be completely invisible to the player, and we want it to be flagged as a physical entity. Both of these options can be set up in the material of the proxy, but it's not a setting we can find in Blender itself. We'll have to set up those parameters in the FBX importer as soon as we import the object into CryEngine. But, in order to differentiate between the original barrel and its proxy, we need to set up a different material to both the barrel and its proxy. But we don't need to configure anything, we only need the two elements to have two separate materials. You'll see why in a minute. So in order to do that, I'm simply going to click on my main mesh here, and I'll click on the material tab. And I'll simply just create a new material entry, which I will then rename to, let's say, barrel underscore A. This material name will show up as one of the submaterials in the main material we will generate inside CryEngine. We'll get to that in a moment. The reason why we're giving these materials a name is only so that we can differentiate between them and know what each of these materials are applied to. Now I'll do the exact same thing for the proxy, setting a separate material to it, and renaming it to proxy underscore mat. Again, the name doesn't matter, we just need to know which one is which. And that's pretty much it. The rest of the setup will take place in CryEngine, so as soon as you're ready, let's export the object as an FBX file in any destination you want, and let's fire up the CryEngine project we want to import the asset in. 
Now that we're here, I'm going to open the FBX Mesh Importer from the Tools panel and I'm going to just drag the FBX file I created into the Mesh Importers window. If we click on the Materials tab, you can now see that we have two materials there, or two sub-materials rather. These are the two material entries we've created in Blender, and as you can see, the name was successfully carried over. The actual material of this object does not exist yet, so we'll need to generate it. So let's click on this Generate Material button, and just place it according to your own project's guidelines. I'll just place it in the same folder where I'll save the model as well. And by the way, the order of operation does not matter here. You can generate the material at any point in time. What really matters though, is that we flag the proxy geometry with the right physicalization setting. As you can see, we have a drop-down menu for both of these materials. Now the reason why I wanted to have two of them is that I can mark one of them, the one we have for the proxy, as a proxy nodraw element. That will cause any geometry that the proxy underscore mat material is assigned to, to act as a collision proxy and to not render. It's as simple as that. The last thing we want to do is to look over the hierarchy on the left hand side here and to change the type of geometry to a physics proxy. We'll talk about LOD settings very soon in a future Blender tutorial. And that's pretty much it. Now you can save your final model, drag your textures in, assign them to the material you generated, place your asset in the scene, convert it to an entity, enable physics and AI, and yeah, you're done. You have collisions. If you have any problems or questions, or you simply want to hang out with people who share the same love, motivation, and frustration, quite frankly, then make sure to check out our official Discord channel, where you can get in contact with us and other CryEngine developers, share your work, and get feedback on the quality of your barrels. I'll see you there.